Hey, welcome back. In this episode, you will examine the Azure AD Connect installation requirements, the options for installing and configuring the tool, and how to monitor your Azure AD Connect help. My name is Sushant Sutish, and I am your trainer for this Microsoft 365 Certified Security Administrator Associate Certification course. After this lesson, you would be able to configure Azure AD Connect prerequisites, set up Azure AD Connect, describe Azure AD Connect Health, manage users and groups with directory synchronization, use Azure AD Connect Sync Security Groups, and troubleshoot directory synchronization as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So before you install Azure AD Connect, there are a few things that you need. The first requirement is you need an Azure AD. You can create an Azure free trial to get an Azure AD tenant. You can either use Azure portal or the Office 365 portal to access the Azure AD tenant. You can add and verify the domain you plan to use in Azure AD. And an Azure AD tenant allows by default 50K objects. So when you verify your domain, the limit is increased to 300K objects. The next thing what you need is an on-premises Active Directory. Within the on-premises Active Directory, the AD schema version and the forest functional level must be Windows Server 2003 or later. The domain controller can run any version as long as the schema and the forest level requirements are met. If you plan to use the feature of password wide back, then the domain controller must be on Windows Server 2008 R2 or later. The domain controller used by Azure AD must be writable. It is not supported to use the read-only domain controller and Azure AD Connect does not follow any write redirects. Another prerequisite is Azure AD Connect Server. The Azure AD Connect Server contains critical identity data. It is important that administrative access to this server is properly secured. The Azure AD Connect server must be treated as a tier 0 component. Another requirement could be an SQL server used by the Azure AD Connect. Azure AD Connect requires an SQL server database to store identity data. By default, an SQL Server 2012 Express Local DB is installed. SQL Server Express has a 10 GB size limit that enables you to manage approximately 100,000 objects. If you need to manage a higher volume of directory object, you need to point the installation wizard to a different installation of SQL Server. This type of SQL Server installation can impact the performance of Azure AD Connect. Keep in mind, this type of an SQL Server installation can impact the performance of Azure AD Connect. Let's understand accounts. First of all, you need an Azure AD Global Administrative Account for the Azure AD tenant you wish to integrate with. This account must be a school or organization account and that cannot be a Microsoft account. If you use an express setting or upgrade from directory sync, then you must have an enterprise administrative account for your on-premises active directory. The last one is connectivity. The Azure AD Connect server needs DNS resolution for both intranet and internet. The DNS server must be able to resolve names both to your on-premises Active Directory and the Azure AD endpoints. All right, now let's look at how to set up your Azure AD Connect. Installing Azure AD Connect is accomplished by running a configuration wizard and performs additional installation and configuration tasks during the implementation. Because Microsoft is continually improving the product, it is important to download the latest version. You can go to the Microsoft download to find the latest version or you can go to the Azure portal, go to your Active Directory. On the left hand side under Manage, go to Azure AD Connect. And if you have not installed and configured Azure AD Connect, you would be able to download the tool from here as well. During installation of Azure AD Connect, you can choose to install it either on an Express or Custom Setup. Express setup is the most common option and is used by 90% of all installation. It was designed to provide a configuration that works for most common customer scenarios. 
It assumes that you have a single Active Directory Forest on-premises and you have an enterprise administrator account you can use for the installation. And you have less than 100,000 objects in your on-premises Active Directory. With the express setting, you will get password hash synchronization, a configuration that synchronizes users, groups, contacts, and Windows 10 computers. Automatic upgrade is enabled to make sure that you always use the latest available version. You can use custom setup when you do not have access to your enterprise admin account, where you have more than one forest or you have domains in your forest not reachable from the connect server or you plan to use federation or pass through authentication for user sign in or you have more than 100,000 objects and need to use a full SQL server. It's very important for us to understand what is Azure AD Connect Health as well. Azure AD Connect Health provides robust monitoring for your on-premises identity infrastructure. It enables you to maintain a reliable connection to Office 365 and Microsoft Online Services. This reliability is achieved by providing monitoring capabilities for your key identity components. Also, it also makes the key data points about three components easily accessible. Azure AD Connect Health for ADFS support ADFS 2.0 on Windows Server 2008 and R2 and Windows Server 2012 and R2 and Windows Server 2016 as well. Let's understand how can you manage users with directory synchronization. There are several required management tasks that you must perform as a security and compliance administrator to ensure users synchronize efficiently and that you successfully deploy Azure AD Connect. The first task is managing user accounts. It's important to note that you create, modify, and delete user objects using your local Active Directory users and computer snap-in or Windows PowerShell in your on-premises Active Directory. You cannot manage synchronized user accounts using your Microsoft 365 Admin Center or Exchange Online Admin Center because all synchronized attributes are not synchronized back to your on-premises environment. Only a few additional attributes that are not available in your Active Directory must be managed in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, such as Microsoft 365 product licenses and advanced Exchange Online settings such as enabling in-place archiving, etc. The next task is recovering a user account that was accidentally deleted. Azure AD supports soft deletes. This feature is also available if you delete users in your on-premises Active Directory and the deletion is synchronized to Microsoft 365. In this case, the user object is put in a deleted state and no longer appears in the user list, and the user's license can be reassigned. The user object will not be linked to an on-premises object unless you restore it or create a new object with the same source anchor. So if you accidentally delete a user account and a directory synchronization cycle runs, the user account will be deleted in Microsoft 365. However, if you have the recycle bin feature enabled in Active Directory, you can recover the account from the recycle bin and the link between account will be re-established. If you do not have a recycle bin enabled, you might need to create another user account with a new GUID. Let's look at another task. This time it is recovering from unsynchronized deletes. Another important maintenance task is dealing with an on-premises delete that does not synchronize to Microsoft 365. In this case, the linked object is not removed from Azure AD. This situation can occur if directory synchronization has not yet completed or if the directory synchronization failed to delete a specific cloud object, both of which result in an orphaned Azure AD object. And the last task is enhanced user management. Azure AD Connect offers additional enhanced user management features including password writeback and device writeback. So what is a password writeback? Users can change their password through the login page or through user settings in Microsoft 365 and have them written back to the organization on-premises Active Directory. And what is device write back? 
Device writeback is used to enable conditional access based on either devices to ADFS protected application or on relied third party trust. This provides additional security and assurance that access to application is granted only to trusted devices. Once you implement directory synchronization using Azure AD Connect between your Active Directory and Azure AD, you need to manage all group membership in your Active Directory. Like the directory synchronization of users from on-premises Active Directory to Azure AD, groups in Active Directory also synchronize from on-premises Active Directory to Azure AD. And similar to the user writeback feature, the group writeback feature also writes Microsoft 365 groups from Azure AD to your on-premises Active Directory as well. This feature is included as an optional feature in your Azure AD Connect. Let's talk about Azure AD Connect Sync Security Groups. A Microsoft 365 Security and Compliance Administrator can use these groups to delegate controls in Azure AD Connect to other users. You can also use these groups to assign a user temporary permission to run a manual synchronization or to use Azure AD Connect to troubleshoot directory synchronization issues. So how can you troubleshoot directory synchronization? So let me take you to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So I am on my Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Under Settings, you can click on Directory Sync Errors. The key troubleshooting tasks for directory synchronization include analyzing logs for errors and remediating synchronization errors with the tool itself. So some of the typical issues that can lead to the problem are authentication error, unexpected change in your Active Directory affect the affected OU, corrupted Active Directory, duplicate attributes, etc. The Microsoft 365 Admin Center provides an overview about directory synchronization errors. So that concludes the lesson on directory synchronization. In the next video, we're going to learn about Azure AD identity protection. So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.